Uh, one way that I've uh, found to help kids with reads is decision-making drills. So basically you create a formation, right? You create a formation, okay? A uh, formation might be an on ball, okay? An on ball. So there's the two players and here's the coach. The coach might give this player a hard show, a separated show, a soft show, an ice, right? If I'm guarding a screener, an ice, he might do a jam, whatever. He's giving the players uh, a rep, and then they got to read. And then if he, if, if, if the teammate is low, the ball screen is high and vice versa. A coach can can do a, a decision-making drill with, with ball. So if the player is here, corner, corner, I got two balls, player drives to the lane. When the player gets to the lane, uh, either, either before or, or during, I might pass the ball to number two. He shoots it, right? Now number one passes it to three because two has the ball for me. And now after two and three shoot it, one is here, coach has the ball. Now coach drives, one lifts, and gets a spacing read. So uh, again, probably a little hard for you to understand unless you've seen my drills, uh, decision-making drills live. We do them in our curriculum, they're in our curriculum. But basically, uh, decision-making drills, you're giving the kids flesh to keep it fresh. You're using the ball to make a decision or body. You know, bones over cones help kids make better decisions. Ain't a lot of decision going around cones and chairs. Those are rep drills. Bones and flesh, those are decision-making drills. And then you rinse and repeat. Uh, that's Darius Miller. Plays for the uh, New Orleans. I, I'm not sure if he played in Australia, but uh, man, what an elite player he was. Empower them to lead. So in your workouts, right, he worked out at, at, with our prep school kids, okay? And so my job for him was, hey, you got you to gotta teach. You got to be a leader. So you got to tell the guys where to go, and I want you to talk. So for your best players in the workout so they don't get bored, have them be an assistant coach. Teach you know, teach them how to lead during the drill. They gotta, they gotta help build the team. They, it's called peer tutoring. So they, they encourage, they acknowledge, they correct some of the uh, less talented players. That, that way, you engage the elite player in the workout. Your, your time and score for that elite player is a lot harder. Uh, Vince Carter, I had to give him a shout out with a picture here. Uh, you have to have non-negotiables with every practice. Here's some of mine again, uh, practically. And, and, and workouts, every, every time they go to a drill, they got to run. They got to have a high motor. They got to be active in line. So while kids are in line, have them do ball reps, have them do shots, have them do toe taps. But they got to be active while they wait in line. Obviously, as a sub, they got to be engaged. So they're either celebrating, all right, successes, or they're encouraging kids that made mistakes. But they're not silent. Again, they got to have energy, sound, passion. Uh, they got to talk and touch. So coach to player has to touch. Player to player has to touch. A little typo there. Player to coach has to touch. Coach to coach has to touch. If, if the kids like my drill, they have to say, Coach Bake, I like that drill. Good job, Coach. Because as a coach, words of affirmation is my love, love language. In my workouts, they can't, and this comes from Kobe, my time with Kobe. This is a, a Mamba mentality thing. They got to have strong body language, right? They can't yawn. Right? They can't show they're tired. They can't show they're weak. They can't show they're frustrated. They can't show they're confused. They can't lean over. Is that real? Yeah, they feel all those emotions, but they can't give in to them. They can't show their opponents or their teammates that there's weakness. Right? Let's camouflage that, and let's, let's be intimidating with our body language. And eventually, you know, that goes, the weakness goes away. Smile. You know, eye contact with whoever's talking to you, little stuff like that. But those are in my mind during the workout. Like, if I see that, I'm catching it. Like, those are just instinctive. Uh, again, how do you build it? Well, roles versus growth. First thing you need to do with your players and, and player development workouts is you got to give them what they need, not what they want, right? They got to fulfill that role on their team defined by their head coach. Then grow, then grow their game. Then give them a dessert. Add another tool for their toolbox. 
But if you got an hour workout, 30 minutes of it is their role in their team. Then the other 30 maybe might be something that you're trying to grow their skill and grow them. Um, uh, if you're an assistant or you're a private skill trainer like me, you got to be on the same page as the head coach because he or she is the most important. You got to share their same passion and vision. 